water is crucial for all life on Earth, whether that life is microbes, plants, or humans. Water, also known as H2O, is comprised of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The oxygen and hydrogen atoms are bonded through covalent bonds, meaning that each hydrogen shares its electron with one of oxygen's electrons. However, oxygen has a total of six electrons, and after sharing two of them with hydrogen, it will have an extra four electrons left unbound. So what happens to them? Electrons by nature are negatively charged. Elements vary in their level of attractiveness toward electrons, a concept known as electronegativity. Electrons are attracted to elements that have the highest electronegativity. This means that electrons will spend more time orbiting the nucleus of the more electronegative atom, oxygen, and less time orbiting the less electronegative atom, hydrogen. This unequal sharing is called a polar covalent bond. Since the electrons spend more time with the oxygen atom, the oxygen end of the water molecules has an overall negative charge, and hydrogen end has a partial positive charge. However, polar covalent bonds are not the only kind of bond created in water. In nature, opposites attract, and in this case, the negatively charged oxygen from one water molecule is attracted to the partial positive charge from the hydrogen of another water molecule. Once the two water molecules are in proximity to one another, they create a hydrogen bond between them. When a lot of water molecules come together, they create lots of hydrogen bonds, which becomes a network of hydrogen bonds. This network gives water special properties. For example, here on Earth, plants use three factors to get water from the roots up to the leaves. Surface tension, adhesion, and cohesion. Similar to how you drink water through a straw, evaporation of water acts like a suction. The pressure creates a pulling force and draws the water up. Cohesion forces water molecules to stick to one another and fill the column, and adhesion allows water molecules to cling to each other on the sides of the column. This is how water is able to flow upward from the roots of a plant through the stem to the leaves. However, Hydrogen bonds are not only limited to oxygen and hydrogen atoms. For a hydrogen bond to be created, there must be a hydrogen and a highly electronegative atom, such as nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. DNA, the molecule responsible for our genetics and heredity, is held together by hydrogen bonding that uses both oxygen and nitrogen. Hydrogen bonds brought on by electrostatic interactions between bases are what helps hold the two DNA strands together. Electrons on the oxygen and nitrogen atoms are negatively charged and are attracted to partial positive charge of the nearby hydrogen atoms. Polar covalent bonds and hydrogen bonds are not the only types of interactions between atoms and molecules. In fact, compared to other types of bonds, these hydrogen bonds are relatively weak. The good news is, their sum is strong enough to hold the two DNA strands together quite well. Hydrogen bonding allows water to take on characteristics which no other liquid compound has. Water's unique properties, such as its ability to form electrostatic interactions, polar bonds, and much more, allow it to be a versatile and fundamental part of all life.